A Foot Clan, week five in the books. This was an unbelievable week where so many players went bananas like Will Fuller, Andy's start of the week, but a lot of players also stunk or goosed. Mike Evans, I'm looking at you. We're going to cover them all, the great, the bad, the ugly, the good, the beautiful, the hard, hard losses for some of us. Check it out on today's episode. Hey, Foot Clan, support for today's show comes from Sonos. Every Sonos speaker is designed from the inside out for incredibly detailed sound and deep bass and fine tuned by Oscar and grammar winning producers, mixers, and artists. The deepest bass. Listen, I just got the Sonos Move, and aside from my uh, 10-year-old tech head freaking out opening this thing up and setting it up, it's awesome. It I mean, is you can amazing. You can take it with you everywhere. Charger's right on the counter. You grab, you go. It works on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's their new portable speaker. You can enjoy the brilliant sound anywhere with Sonos Move, the durable, battery-powered smart speaker for indoor and outdoor listening. Check it out at Sonos.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the show, Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, week five, nearly in the books. Got a little Kittle, a little OBJ tonight, a little Baker, a little Chubb, but most of our games are in the books. That's right. That's right. My League of Record team has been, as if you've been listening, it's been crushing 166 points two weeks ago. Unfortunately, I lost. And then, of course, there was the story last week. I scored the second most in the league with 132 points in this league. That's kind of where the scoring is. And and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to go out like this. Second most, but I lost. I'm going to overdo. I'm going to score 150 points this week. Well, there's and, something on Jason's mind to start the show today. And I lost with 150 again. I thought you were coping with it but you were preparing just for the opening this of today's is, show. no you're correct i'm coping with it right now it's not fun i'm sure our listeners have all been there i've been there it's painful to i mean mike you play in a league one of your money league mm -hmm. where you get a point for winning your matchup and you get a point if you finish in the top half in total scoring because you and your league you can't cope like Jason can cope, so you need a little oomph. I would like to change <laughs> the league setting in our <laughs> league. Jason, <laughs> yesterday, as he was seeing the inevitable loss, was like, "No, Mike, tell me more about this system <laughs> where uh, the top half gets he, a point. <laughs> he's got a little notebook out. <laughs> he's taking notes. It's not fair it's, to be uh, like the second highest scoring team three weeks in a row and lose is infuriating. It is. It's less infuriating when you get a cheap win. Those feel great, but it's uh, it can be very difficult. It can be tough. You've had a very, very good team. I told you last week, I'm just going to be starting all of your opponent's players as my starts of the week on the show. My predictive analysis will be dumbed down to throw the algorithms out the window, throw the fantasy points against out the window, and just play who you're – it would have let me know that Josh Jacobs was going to score 30 fantasy points against the Bears if I just looked at your opponent. That's right. That's all you got to do. All right. Well, we've got a lot of reactions, not just from Jason, from the Week 5 matchups. Every Monday we like to step into uh, the Monday Punday mm. yes. extraordinaire. We've got – Welcome. <laughs> I am the walrus, poo-poo-doo-doo. It was inevitable yet a down game. Well, look, those who saw the game script of the Raiders being up 17 points on the Bears, yeah. raise your hands and then look in the mirror and say, yes, I am a liar. Also, where's Waller? I, it's, it's That's all right. All right. Uh, Legon McCoy. Oh, that's oh, very, very distinct. French. Very distinct. <laughs> Legon McCoy. Uh <laughs> Julio Jones. Oh, come on. Oh, that's not fair. 
Well, follow it up. With Pulio oh, Jones. This is a sophisticated <laughs> show. Hammy Watkins, yes, yep. yes. Sammy, Sammy Squatkins. Yeah, not good. Melvin Gordont. This is my favorite one coming And then up. Uh, we've got Duck, Duck, Mike Evans. <laughs> Philop. Flop? Oh, like flop. Flop Rivers. <laughs> Careful with that word. Okay. Delaney needs a walker. Yeah. Charknado. Oh, so they can be good. A positive people. one. And DJ Chark Week. Okay. That summed up the week. Sammy Watkins did the thing that you dream of if your opponent has him and you need him not to score any points, which is start the game, be active, get hurt on the first play, and never see them again. To be fair, if... I was I talked about this on the the Sunday live. It was madness to see all the notes. You know, we go through the injuries, who's in, who's out, kind of the late breaking ones, and then you cover these are the players who are questionable. You need to monitor their health. You need to have a backup plan just in case. And I think there was four guys in that Sunday night game. Marlon Mack was a game time decision. Damian Williams was expected to play, but then there was a weird shadow of doubt cast. Sammy Watkins was a late addition. T.Y. Hilton may not play. So you spun the wheel. Three of those guys played, and Sammy Watkins was the one who pulled up and left right away. I think, Andy, you have pointed out that his season yes, I tweeted. <laughs> has been basically the career of Sammy that everyone's frustrated with. Gets off to this enormous start. Amazing talent, game one. Then you just kind of... He it disappears get, weeks two through four. You get caught, and then he gets injured. And then he gets hurt in week five. That's a perfect summary of six years of Sammy Watkins. Now, Fair. I'll be honest. I felt like a darn fool after week one <laughs> saying, I don't want Sammy on any of my teams, but who's crying now? Uh, the the lizards out Not there. Not me, our, that's for sure. Our king has let us down. Yeah, I don't know. We, I'm surprised uh, we're here again. But, hey, you can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow Jason at JasonFFL. Send him a warm condolence message. I need it. Uh, follow Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. And we're giving away a signed Saquon Barkley jersey. I think he may be back on the field before we, the giveaway even ends. Footclankgiveaway.com. Madness. Uh, go and enter. You'll get a chance to win it. We'll give it away at the end of the month. So check that out. I think it's time for the Rewind. Weekly Rewind. All right. Wayne Gallman exited with a concussion. Mm. That's too bad. Yep. As did Mason Rudolph, a very scary play. Uh, Mason Rudolph, Wayne Gallman, both concussed. Sammy Watkins, the hamstring injury. Patrick Mahomes, if you watched the game last night, tweaked his ankle. What? Who, who put this verbiage of he tweaked his ankle? His ankle was... That's a tweak. ...was kerplunked by a 300-pound man. We don't, have, we don't put kerplunked down. What? No one knows how to spell that. We can figure it, a, it out. It's a K, right? Yeah, of course it's a K. Okay. But my point is... Let me reread this. Patrick Mahomes kerplunked his ankle in Sunday's Week 5 loss to the Colts, but is expected to be fine. If you kerplunk your ankle, Mike, if you, Mike you don't, you're not fine the next week. No, you don't play through it the whole game and then they're fine next week. This, no. this, is, a, this is, a, is a hard tweak. It's a hard... He'll, have, he'll be limited in some practices and he'll be fine. And the thing is... Ish. If you had Patrick Mahomes last night, it was... Very, 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 very painful to watch because I said this. Imagine I, having a 300-pound man step on your ankle. Which was also painful. It's way for, worse. For Patrick Mahomes. But it was equally painful for my <laughs> fantasy team because the Colts did exactly what they needed to do. The beginning of the game summed up their game plan. The Chiefs go down the field. You hold them to a field goal. Then you take up six minutes on a drive. You couldn't stop them if you tried. If you ran the ball every single player with Marlon Mack that entire game, you would have run it straight into the end zone. If they hadn't have flipped the ball out left to Jordan Wilkins and lost 10 yards, Marlon Mack would have run straight into the end zone on that play too. It was a dominating, impressive performance by a great offensive mind in Frank Reich. And great offensive line. And a great Colts, offensive line. But and a great offensive running back in, in Mack. Yes, because there's a different – like Jordan Wilkins He looks was like fine. Love Bell. I Jordan, mean, nobody looks like Love Bell more, like, more than Marlon Mack I does. wanted to say he looked like a real herky-jerky version. 
yeah. of Lev. Like, Lev- Le'Veon Bell, when he's waiting, he looks real smooth. Marlon Mack's kind of like, doo, 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 like a little, little frantic, little jumpy. But, but he still gets it done. And I messaged you guys about I was I had to watch the game on delay, so I couldn't react in live to it. But when Frank Reich went for it twice in one drive on fourth and short when you're supposed to go for it, and he didn't read the old man curmudgeon football book that says you got to take the points, and they, he actually used math and game analysis and broke it down and said, yeah, we need to go for it because our probability is very good that we get it. it I I got sweaty. I felt, you got a little hot and bothered. I felt feelings that I haven't felt in years. <laughs> I needed to call a doctor. Uh huh. Okay. Dangerous. It was. Oh, it was so. Here's the thing about the analytics on that. The odds on converting aren't the only piece of the pie. The odds on converting are a part of of analyzing that decision. Also, the odds of winning when you con when you actually get it factor into the analytics. If you look at it and you say. If I get this fourth down, I have a 72% chance to win instead of a 52% chance to yes. win. It should motivate the decision. That's the secondary analytics that they started to use. They've converted, I believe, eight or nine consecutive fourth down plays. And it's just smart football. Oh, Unless so you don't get it, and then you get fired. I mean, that's <laughs> the other side of it. If you if you haven't earned kind of tenure with your your uh team with the ownership and all that stuff you can't take those kind of chances frank Reich i would has argue proved it. i would argue if you want to earn tenure with your team take those smart chances and yeah. win more games and then earn the tenure just imagine what matt Nagy's thinking up now after seeing that game philip dorsett exited with the hamstring injury did uh. the same exact thing as sammy watkins marquise brown held out the majority of the game after his touchdown with an ankle injury we'll monitor that uh, David Johnson apparently played through a bad back in the game. Now, it didn't stop him from hitting a season high in, in total yards. He also looked pretty good on the ground, which we hoped to see against Cincinnati. But Chase Ed Edmonds was pretty good, too. So if for some reason D uh, David Johnson missed this week, Chase Edmonds would oh, be the play. only guy against Atlanta next week. And oh, that, my goodness. that would be very nice. Josh Jacobs briefly sidelined with an elbow injury, came back in. Darren Sproles left with a quad injury. And... Well, you know what? I'm going to give him this. I'm going to give what him. Are we, what are we doing I'm here? here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Jay Gruden was fired today. We have a note in here that he still isn't sure who his quarterback is. I don't blame him. And I'm going to no. stand on. He had no chance. No, he did not With have a chance. With the roster and injuries that he suffered in that time, I actually think he consistently outperformed what that team should have been able to do. When you are running out Colt McCoy and Adrian Peterson, you, what hope do you have? And we all knew that going into the oh. week. But Jay Gruden, I don't think he – now, maybe it was his time to go, and maybe it was a mercy kill for him. I mean, just move on. But he, – he, well, he wasn't fired. He fired them. <laughs> That's what Gruden's saying. Yeah, well, <laughs> ironically, Bill Callahan takes over as interim head coach. Oh, man. Who is the same – Man that took over for his brother John in Oakland when he was fired. And so, he's already talking about, I need to establish the run. Ladies and gentlemen, Adrian Peterson's going to get the ball 20 times and rush for 30 yards, and they're going to lose in epic fashion. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Tyro Williams, Devin Singletary, Rex Burkhead, Deshaun Jackson, Ben Watson did not play. Weekly news and notes. Brought to you, as always, by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a piece of breaking news, injury updates, that sort of thing. Get the free app today. We're going to go ahead and get into the Stud Muffins. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right, per Field Yates, this was the first week in history where five players scored 40-plus PPR points in the same week. Yeah, some monster. But only one man will lose with them. And it's me. Because <laughs> you are a Christian McCaffrey owner. That is correct. Uh, most people have gone 3-0 the last three weeks with Christian McCaffrey, especially if they stacked him with Mike Evans last week. Not me. <laughs> Not me. I'm proof <laughs> that you can come up against these big players and, and so overcome. <laughs> you you can. You're yeah. bringing hope for everyone, I, Jay. Correct. 
All right, let's start with the stud muffins at the quarterback position. Everything came to fruition as we hoped for Deshaun Watson against Atlanta. He was uh, pretty upset after losing last week. Went 28 for 33 for 426 and 5, another 47 yards on the ground. This is why you keep playing Deshaun Watson. I can probably say the same thing. I mean, you've had a couple down weeks for Patrick Mahomes now, one touchdown across two weeks. You just keep playing these guys because they are the only players capable of giving you 50 plus point weeks at the position. Deshaun Watson was a monster. Finally started throwing the ball to Will Fuller. Let's give credit to Russell Wilson. Russell? Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, by the way, is the quarterback one on the season and on pace for more touchdown passes than Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is on pace for 35. So that, after that hot start in the 50 last year, Russell Wilson's on pace for 38. Yeah, I, I definitely think uh, Pat Mahomes will beat 35 when he gets Tyreek Hill back, which could happen as soon as this week. Uh, presumably the the hamstring injury is not going to be you know a, a super long injury for Sammy Watkins, get the offensive line back. I would be most concerned about Chris Jones, who left that game, the defensive lineman. Without Chris Jones, you've seen the recipe to beat the Chiefs, in my opinion, and teams are just going to keep trying to do it if they can, although the Colts have an elite offensive line. Matt Ryan, big game. I believe five consecutive 300-yard games to start the year. 32 for 46, 330 and 3, and they keep on losing, but they go take Arizona on next week in Arizona. He's going to be a great start. A lot of points in that game. Hey, shout out to Teddy Bridgewater. Four touchdown passes against Tampa, 314 yards. Both Teddy Bridgewater and Kyle Allen undefeated after Cam Newton wow. and Drew Brees went out. 3-0, and each of them. Setting the table for the return of their quarterbacks later in the year uh, as as well as he can. Yeah, and they did. Did you catch the video of Drew Brees proving that he can throw the ball yes. again? Like there, this vid, he, he put I out did. a video. It was an interesting pose after each throw. <laughs> That's what I wanted to make sure that you saw that. I felt like that was somehow therapeutic. The pose Where, had to have been helping his thumb. He would throw the ball, and then he would go into like a ninja-like defense where you, you think he is right. about to dodge an unknown assailant. It was absurd <laughs> and looked like what it's you know a great. teenager would do in his backyard when he's trying to be super cool. <laughs> throw the ball. Wow! There's got to be a reason for it, but... I don't know it, so it just looks really funny. And by funny, you mean dumb. <laughs> uh, he'll, much like Saquon, he's going to beat the expectation for his return by a wide margin as well. But Teddy, yeah, so to, to speak to Teddy Bridgewater, shout out, but also pretty irrelevant. Next two weeks, Jacksonville and the Bears. I expect him to start both of those games and Breeze to return against Arizona. That would be my expectation. I would like to start Breeze against Arizona. Yeah, and Jacksonville, Chicago, just take those off, Drew. Those are games that you're going to get beat up anyway, potentially. At least the Chicago one. Yep. Kyler Murray, big game for him. 10 for 93 and a touchdown rushing. First game without a turnover. He's the quarterback eight on the season. I'm not sure that, you know, on the Cardinals couldn't have got off to a worse start, really. They're one, three, and one. Kyler Murray's the quarterback eight on the season. Through five games, where are you at with him for a, from a fantasy perspective? What I, you expected to see? I absolutely love what we're seeing fantasy-wise from Kyler. He is a guy that I think you could still buy low on. If you look at how – I mean, he's the quarterback eight, and they never finish their drives in the red zone. So if that continues, if the trend continues where they just can't finish drives, whatever, you've got a top ten quarterback. But if they actually – figure out how to punch the ball into the end zone once they get to the 10 yard line. I mean, he He'll be a there monster. are so many touchdowns left on the table for the Arizona Cardinals and if that changes around, you've got a top 4 quarterback. Just to highlight the discrepancy, uh we we have to talk about, you know, your touchdown rate. How many uh, what percentage of your attempts are you throwing in a touchdown on? And Russell Wilson is a once again an astronomical number at 7.7. .7. The league average, you know, it's Year to year, it's right around that four and a half mark. Kyler Murray is sitting at two percent. Two percent of his attempts are turning into touchdowns. If that number just goes to the league average, yeah, then he's going to be he's going to be dominating for even, fantasy. Even if it goes to one percent <laughs> below the league average, he'll be great. Fair enough. 
And then Tom Brady got it done against Washington in the end, 28 for 42, 348 and three. He has a Thursday night game against the Giants because NFL scheduling is awesome. <laughs> uh, Gardner Minshew looked great again, didn't quite have enough to, to will his team to victory against the Christian McCaffreys, but 26 for 44, 374 and two. I bring him up because fantasy owners want to know, is he – you know, startable. He has New Orleans, Cincinnati, and yes. the Jets. Yeah, I think he's startable. He's he's been he he hasn't had an explosive fantasy game, but he's been really steady. And those three matchups are are perfectly fine. Uh, and then I want to highlight well the rest of the quarterbacks. Andy Dalton had a great game, and my baller's on a budget pick. Oh. Kirk Cousins. He came through three hundo, two touchdowns, and. Uh, I think we, did, we a, didn't used to be that excited about Kirk Cousins throwing 302. Nope, nope but it's 302. That's a great game. Yes, it but, is. But that was a product of the Giants. So we'll see if Kirk Cousins is able to keep it going. Before we move into the running back studs of the week, I want to thank today's sponsor. Look, Foot Clan, are you an Amazon Prime member? Yes, of course you are. We know that. But did you know that you have... Thursday Night Football, that's right, Thursday Night Football has returned to Prime Video for a third season. We were just highlighting it. The Patriots will be taking on the Giants, and the cool thing is you can catch all the action on your TV, the web, your mobile, anywhere in the world, and the experience is next level. With Prime Video's X-Ray feature, you can access those awesome next-gen stats, play history, team information. It's available on iOS, Android, Fire Tablets, and Fire TV. Uh, and you can hear new takes on the game. You can switch over to sport broadcast legends Hannah Storm and Andrea Kramer for the play-by-play. -play. So if you don't have cable or you simply want to experience the future of football, the future like Frank Reich is experiencing, am I right? Tune in this Thursday. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern kickoff, 820 Eastern, also available on Fox and NFL Network. NFL Network simulcast subject to change. Thursday Night Football is presented by Bud Light Platinum. And listen, if high interest credit card bills are adding to your stress, there is a solution for you. You can pay off your credit card balances and save money with a credit card consolidation loan from our friends at Lightstream. With Lightstream, you can get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with AutoPay. That is much, much lower than the national average interest rate of over 20%. Ugh. Plus, your rate is fixed, so as rates continue to rise, yours won't. The online application is quick. It's easy. You can apply right from your phone, and you can even get your money the same day you apply. It's just for our listeners. You can apply right now to get a special interest rate discount, and the only way to get it is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. It's subject to credit approval. Rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. All right, running back stud muffins. Christian McCaffrey was insane. 19 for insane. 176 and 2, 6 for 61 and a touchdown through the air. He is on pace for 336 carries. 1,878 rushing yards. He's going to die. Well, this 99 is why receptions, 892 receiving yards, and three touchdowns. That's not possible. And yet, and you would think it would be even less possible because you know it's coming with <laughs> Kyle Allen as your quarterback. And yet it is possible. Right now, Christian McCaffrey is absolutely a cheat code. Yeah, so... I mean, you, you say it's not possible. It's real. It's, it's not humanly possible. You saw him get banged up in that game, go to the sideline. It looked like he could. He was tweaking something, not able to walk well. They're saying. Did he kerplunk or did he tweak? Well, it depends on what you. He didn't come back in. If you can come back in after a kerplunk, he might have double kerplunk. A kerplunk is you need a 300-pound man involved. To, I, get, to fully I get kerplunk. Okay. All right. You don't just. You're not just walking along. 
Kerplunk. It doesn't gotcha. happen like you that. You have to have a 300 pound man. Yes. Okay. Well, so he didn't. So he wasn't it's like kerplunk. a body foul from Shaq. That's a Kerplunk. But, exactly. Okay. Like if it's a 250, a guy who's a, come that's on. not a that's that's baby stuff. Get I can't here. kerplunk you. No. No oh, man. You need to. You, you can work hard. It. If you I work can, hard, you work can, on this. You can kerplunk <laughs> away, oh, man. I gotta add a little lbs. I'll get there soon. <laughs> Just taking videos, running up. Snap. Just kerplunk. Snap. Gotcha. <laughs> I did it. Uh. When Look, you hit 300, I want to hear that. As a Christian McCaffrey owner, it was uh, really scary when he was on the sideline. It looked like he couldn't hold weight. After the game, the team came out. He came out. He said it was just cramps. I was That's surprised all. you didn't fly there to be there for that press conference. I was massaging <laughs> they rub him out? His, his quads. Now that makes stuff. sense with his odd walk on the sideline now that you say that. I didn't see that report. So here's what his quote was. This is Christian McCaffrey uh, about the cramps. He said, quote, I just can't let that happen. Have to do a better job. Yeah, that's right. That's McCaffrey. why I love him. Yes, he, I mean, nobody works harder. I think he can hold up because of the work he does in the off season. He's incredible. Aaron Jones was incredible. Four touchdowns could have had six by my count. Yeah, but four touchdowns against Dallas. Seven for seventy-five through the air. This is what we hope to see with Devontae Adams out. Eight targets, seven catches. It's the first time the Cowboys have ever allowed four rushing touchdowns to one player in a game. And you can keep starting your Aaron Jones. Now, the big surprise of the week was Josh Jacobs against Chicago. 26 for 123 and 2. They got out to a big lead. The game script is perfect. And then John Gruden used him in the right fashion. Jacobs, we thought maybe, hey, you could buy him low. We, we all liked him as a buy low last week. We said, ah, you might be able to buy him low after Chicago. Uh, heading into the bye week. I hope, hope you paid up last week. Yeah, that because you're not going to buy him low now. That stuff. I I know a lot of people had him on their bench. I I would have. I mean, the process was sound. I would have been willing to bench him if I looked like I had a better option. You have a running back that wasn't in the top twenty the previous three weeks. Travel across the globe to play the Bears. But goodness gracious, he balled out. It looks great. Now he gets a bye week off to rest. Should be uh, great coming back. Yeah, Leonard Fournette is leading the AFC in rushing. Said two consecutive great games, went over 100 again, finally scored. He was the, uh, the Julio of the running back position, hadn't been in the end zone, finally did. The Jacksonville offense is the same <laughs> as the Colts offense. Uh, just put DJ Chark in place of Hilton on the outside and mm -hmm. Marlon Mack and Leonard Fournette. That's your offense. So New Orleans, Cincinnati, New York coming up, Leonard Fournette is turning into a great return on investment for drafters. Yeah, he's on pace for 96 targets as well. It's the volume at the running back position that is the most important thing. You can watch him struggle, 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 get hit behind the line of scrimmage over and over, but when you get that many opportunities, you're going to break some. He's been safe with upside, and I think that as more time goes on with Gardner Minshew, the offense is just going to keep clicking, getting better. I, I, I mean, he's... You're, nobody's disappointed that you've got Fournette if you drafted him. Dalvin Cook, great again. Chris Carson from Thursday, great game. Sonny Michelle, because I don't know how often I'll be able to say this. Great game for Sonny Michelle. He had 16 carries for 91 yards and a touchdown. Actually caught three passes in this one. Has the Thursday night game against New York. Rex Burkhead was inactive. Damian Harris was inactive. Brandon Bolden had a touchdown again. Of but, course. But Sonny Michelle was good in this one. Yes, yeah. and Sony Michelle, like the the recipe that it, it makes the soup a little bit more delicious is when one of the running backs is out. If James White is out and Burkhead is active, you play Rex Burkhead. If if Burkhead is out, I mean, vice versa for James White. And if one of those guys goes out, then it's usually sometimes a soup can have too many ingredients. Is what yes, you're saying. It's too it, chunky, too too salty. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work out. Like when James, too much flavor. When when Burke had got everything in the the a uh, couple weeks ago, but Sony Michelle should be uh, in line for another solid game against the Giants on Thursday. Austin Eckler had 16 targets, caught 15 passes, was a PPR beastosaurus. <laughs> he caught 15 passes. For 86 yards. The end of that game <laughs> was literally, they were down multiple scores. They had to go like 100 yards, and they had no timeouts. So they're like, the defense is like, 
why don't you just keep dumping it off to the guy we'll leave wide open? And Philip exactly, Rivers is like, okay. That's exactly what happened to – that's how I got beat on a Monday night game by Chris Thompson. I had the game in the bag, and Chris Thompson comes out and catches three or four passes going down the field, and, they, you know. Those pass-catching running backs, man. The the, the game script, it's gr – Oh, know, the garbage. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Eckler has been great, obviously, the whole season. He's been great the last several years, even, you know, as the backup to Melvin Gordon – He'll I be, know he'll be used. Yes, he'll be good the the rest of the season, without a doubt. And Melvin Gordon's going to get his. He'll get going. He had an obviously disappointing game. Still had a lot of work, though. Yeah, I mean, if you told me in the week that he was going to get the touches he got against the Broncos' defense has been so bad, I would have I would have loved it. But, uh, you know, I do worry a little bit about Melvin Gordon's peak upside with how good Austin Eckler has been. I actually... I'm not too concerned, surprisingly, despite being the one that was – I had doubts in Gordon heading into the week because of rust, because of some of the things that Anthony Lynn had said early in the week. But I'm not that worried about it because I, I love – I mean, Eckler was not involved in the running game at all. It right. was Melvin Gordon's running game. It was Austin Eckler in the passing game. But I imagine Gordon just gets on the field more in two-minute drills than you than you saw now. I don't think Eckler's going to own those. So I'm less concerned, but I get what you're saying because Eckler has established himself – I think this team has to get better. I mean, this team is two and three. They're behind the Raiders in the division. That's you, embarrassing. You've been beat up and banged up on, you know, at wide receiver. So I did want to mention one more running back before we get into the wide receiver studs. Uh, Todd Gurley. We yeah. didn't really talk about his game, but he had two touchdowns. Um, I'm just curious where you guys are at with Gurley at this point in the season. Gurley – is on a great offense still. They're, they're not as great as they were the last two seasons, but they're still a top-tier offense in general. So the touchdown opportunities are going to come. He's been the guy on the field. He's been getting everything. I, I think you should be – I mean, I, I am not worried about Gurley. If I am the Gurley owner, I, I've got him in a couple of leagues. I traded for him in the listener league two weeks ago. I just want to make sure I've got the handcuff because of the injury risk, and you don't know if after two more weeks, all of a sudden the knee swells up and uh, uh-oh. But if you've got the handcuff, I, th I think you're okay. And fifth in yards per game, the ramp, just for cur in case you're curious, fifth in yards per game, second in passing yards per game, but really not, not up at the top for rushing yardage. No, he, he won't be there as well. Like you're, you don't get... You you didn't get a free Todd Gurley who was going to finish as the number one running back at the back of the first, the early second round, but twenty second. He's still going to be solid for fantasy, and the workload has been ramping up. If you look at his snaps, the first two weeks he was in the sixty percent of the team's offensive snaps, then into the seventies for weeks three and four, and then this past week ninety three percent. And that's so and that's the upset. number. Yeah, that's the the number of snaps that you need Todd Gurley to be on actually was getting involved in the passing game once again, which was bizarre that it took so long to get him some targets. But I think that it's it, – Trending the right it's direction. It's trending the right direction. You you don't have a top five guy. He has top five upside on a weekly basis because he can have ten carries and end up with three rushing touchdowns. But he's a solid RB too. We forget the human element in football sometimes, which is the team can want to manage your reps and manage your knee. And then Todd Gurley can get really upset. Right. And Todd Gurley can come have a closed-door meeting with Sean McVay and say, I need my carries. And show it on the sideline, and the team can adjust because you're competitors. You want to win the game. You want to contribute. I think that's what you're starting to see with those snap counts is Todd Gurley wants to be on the field. He says he's fine. They're finally relenting. Would you go buy him? Are you at that point, or is it more just – I'm, You're optimistic. I'm willing, I'm willing to buy if the price is right. I'm not going to overpay, though. And Fournette or Gurley rest of the season? Fournette. Okay. Yeah, I think I mean, that's I, helpful. I, da you know, Damian Williams or Gurley? Gurley. Gurley. On the, on the Marlon Fournette. Mack or Todd Gurley rest of the season? Marlon Mack. Yeah, Mack's just Mack's out of too control. good. Okay. All right, wide receivers. This guy named Will Fuller. 14 for 217 and 3 on 16 targets. He left... Two extra touchdowns on the field when he was tackled at the one-yard line. On drives, he did not get that touchdown. He literally could have had five touchdowns here. And, Andy, kudos on the start of the week. 
Why, thank you. I, it kind of worked out. <laughs> the best wide receiver fantasy por- uh, performance in half-point scoring in 15 years. He went from th- – this is kind of why at the end of the year we kind of look at week to week. This yeah. is why we have consistency charts on our website for our jointhefoot.com supporters is so you can go see these weeks. He jumped from the wide receiver 66 on the season to the wide receiver 8 in one game. Nice. Nicely done, Will. Beautiful. The William. Air, yeah, the air yards were coming his way already. Yep. There were a couple of players out there where you see a massive amount of air yards that hasn't been getting it done. That's a great way to target what, you know, look, if those connections happen, you have a big week. They happen this week. Great play. Uh, for what it's worth, DeAndre Hopkins was 7 for 88 on eight targets in this game. His target pace in 2019 is 140, which would be his lowest since 20 uh, – yeah, I mean, basically 2015 he was up at 192, 151, 174, 163. I'm still not worried about him. Well, it's 7 for 88 But we'll is, talk about it. 7, 7 for 88, 88 is, is fine. It's a fine game. I mean, you, hope, you would hope that he had the touchdown in there. You just feel bad because Will Fuller yes. went off. And so in comparison, you're like, look, Hopkins – Seven for eighty-eight. Yeah, if the, if what the, a bum! <laughs> if the Texans score over fifty points and Deshaun Watson throws five touchdowns, and you don't get a yeah. hundred or a yeah. touchdown, you're you're not happy. All right, stud muffins at the wide receiver position: Amari Cooper, a monster; Michael Thomas, DJ Chark, Adam Thielen, big bounce back game. Godwin did it again: seven for one twenty-five and two on nine targets. He is the number one wide receiver on the year. Bounce back game for Tyler Boyd. Mike started the week. Allen Robinson, seven for ninety-seven and two. Michael Gallup, seven for one thirteen and one in his first game back. That's a great game from Gallup, and it just reflects what we saw in the preseason to start the year. Uh, those names I mentioned. Who do you want to talk about? DJ Chark, eight yes. for one sixty-four and two on eleven targets. That's Is he who, a wide receiver one? That's who I want to talk about. He, I, I don't see him as a wide receiver one the rest of the way, but I see him as a weekly must start. I mean, right now, he's the wide receiver five on the season. Uh, he's not going to score, you know, what he's he's got more than a touchdown every week so far, so he's not going to end up with 18, 19 touchdowns, but he is the clear best friend of Gardner Minshew, and he's super talented. I mean, he's he's 6'3", runs a 4'3", 4, 4, and is you know his routes his hands he had that that sideline reception this week where it was incredibly difficult and they called it incomplete but then they go back and watch the tape and it's like how did he it had to be incomplete because it's impossible but it was like you know he got both feet down made a football move that was an inch away from being an uh, another touchdown he reminds me of aj green more than anybody else Size, sure. the length, the 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 skills he's showing out there on the field, like that's the comp to me. And Not that he he's that yet, but he's that's the trajectory. Well, yeah, it's I mean it's you can't just get elevated to the status of AJ Green Green after five weeks. No, but after five weeks, he you have to start him every week. You don't look at a matchup and go, well, I'm going to put Chark on the bench. This this is what's happening. DJ Chark is, I mean, I'm, and I'm not going to say he's a wide receiver one because some of these other guys like Hopkins and Mike Evans are underperforming. I think he's a top 20 wide receiver. But, yes, I, I would put him at a high-end wide receiver too. And last week was the only week he didn't score, and he had a touchdown called back in that game. Thielen, 7 for 130 and 2. As Jason said, the squeaky wheel got the oil in mm. this one. <laughs> now, I would classify Stephon Diggs as not a squeaky wheel as much as a – well, that wheel had just fallen off. Yeah, he just he got fined some big money. Too. Yes, big became money. a tricycle. <laughs> yeah, so we'll talk about some duds later. But uh, Michael Gallup, great game. Julian Edelman scored. That was great to see. And then Juju, seven for seventy-five and a touchdown on seven targets and another devastating fumble. But seven for seventy-five and one is better than not. Yeah, he had a great performing. week. <laughs> you you have to assume based on the vicious nature of the hit on Mason Rudolph that you're going to now be to the third string quarterback. Something it's, it's Hodges. <laughs> Devlin. Thank you, Mike. Devlin Hodges. Devlin Hodges. He uh, will start week 6 against the Chargers. And so it's it, Chris you know, Mortensen's already reporting that. Really really tough to to trust Juju at this point with a third string quarterback. All right, uh, tight ends. Basically, no tight ends showed up this week at all. 
Oh, yeah, it's, it's Ertz unbelievable. and Jared Cook. Jared Cook was Mike's start of the week. Woohoo! And it was four for 41 and a touchdown, and that was a great week at the tight end position because tight ends, woof. Yeah, it was let, gross. Let me let me read you the top tight end so that you know, cause like Tyler Eifert, my start of the week didn't work. He, granted, he was wide open in the end zone, and Andy Dalton could have hit him, but definitely didn't work. But don't worry, <laughs> don't worry because nobody's did. Literally, other than it's all Jared on you, Cook, George Kittle. Let's go, Ricky Seals Jones. <laughs> the top ten, give him the sound. Tight ends are Gerald Everett, Darren Fells. Hope you started him. Of course, uh, you got Ertz and Cook, Ryan Izzo. Everybody picked him up to start him. You've got Disley Hooper. head coach of Michigan State's basketball <laughs> yes. team. Yeah. Disley Hooper, Kelsey Ingram, those guys that you know you're going to start. And then it's Lee Smith. I mean. Oh, yes. They were just were. Uh, Izzo and Smith, of I course. Do, I do want to give a shout out to Travis Kelsey. I appreciate somebody competing with Aaron Rodgers on a grimace per minute because Travis Kelsey was grimacing all up and down that field. I haven't seen Aaron Rodgers shove a coach yet. That was yeah, that Travis was, Kelsey. Sh that was shoving Eric Bieniemy. He was getting a little spicy, making him uh, shoving a an coach enemy. over but, the but, line, hey, and then he hugged him afterwards. Say, yes, Travis Kelsey. How about you catch the ball? Seriously, he had hey, or not fumble? Yeah, I mean catch it and yeah. Well, it's not a not could, a good performance. You could see it happening. Like after the second huge missed opportunity for Kelsey, you could see his. Him leave his body, completely go up into his brain and go, oh, crap. Yep. He's stuck there now. Yeah. Unfortunately, some of the best players in the world are going to be the most competitive in the world, and you yeah. kind of lose your head a little bit. Let's move on. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Aaron Rodgers is not what he once was. No. Because... Part it's, it's it's part of it's him. I I'm gonna give three parts. There's three parts. Mm. Part of it's him, not the same player. Part of it's his weapons, not the same weapons. And part of it's Lafleur and what this team can do to win the game because they won the game again. Aaron Rodgers is on a team is four and one, right? And they're four and one, and he's not the Aaron Rodgers that is your your champion of fantasy football, and that's just. That's what it is now. Yep, he's so, a guy that on most weeks. I mean, I, I I'm, I'm, you know, I, I hate to say it. I'm happy that he failed because I told a lot of people do not play him this week. He's not a, he's not a guy you should be playing on a weekly basis. I mean, yeah, he was the number two quarterback last week against Philly, but he I, was. I think he still fits into that must play. I'm not gonna. I'm not must gonna, play. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, he's th quarterback. This, this game was very reminiscent to the Patrick Mahomes game last week, where they got down and it was just. You know, Darrell Williams, Darrell Williams is rushing touchdowns from Aaron Jones. I think he's a must play because I still think he's a top twelve quarterback. But so week one he was the quarterback twenty four. Yeah. Week two he was quarterback nineteen. Yeah. Week three he was the quarterback twenty five. This week I don't know where he's at, but I'm sure it's around twenty five. He's not. I mean, well, he's, those are he's, some low numbers, Jason. Yeah, he's. <laughs> I don't think he is a must play at all. And that's not to say I was speaking you, of a thirty team league. Oh well, yeah. Then I would no, play I, him every week. I still, I still think that you you could do a lot worse than Aaron Rodgers from a potential standpoint. I still think he can go out there. I mean, he doesn't have Devonte Adams. That was what I was going to. And bring didn't he up. play one game? What What's his schedule been before this? Uh, it was Chicago, Minnesota, the first two okay, weeks. Okay, Chicago, Minnesota, and no Devonte Adams game. I'm still going to give him a pass, but not as a top five guy. That's my I. I began this saying this is who he is now. I think he's a he's a six through twelve type of quarterback upside that's as high as you're going to get on a week so maybe that means you do stream him in the right situation yeah as, I, as long as Adams is playing if Adams is not playing I don't I really don't want to stream him unless the matchup is just unbelievable these guys are doing nothing for him. MVS Allison they're doing nothing for him they're missing over and over again not getting open yeah I, I'm certainly not saying that you should never play Aaron Rodgers Aaron Rodgers is obviously going to have no, his I, big monster games those are compelling he, numbers he needs to be a quarterback if you're you drafted him. You drafted him high. You need to be willing and able from the waiver wire to bench him, to say, I've got a better option. I will admit, if, if Aaron Rodgers' name, if it was the same situation, Jared Goff. You would be done. You would be moving on. But it's not. So, <laughs> And he could give you five touchdowns, but uh, right now he's not that guy. Lamar Jackson, another kind of stinker of a game, snuck by Pittsburgh and their third-string quarterback. 
worried at all about Lamar Jackson? I mean, Hollywood Brown's banged up. Mark Andrews is banged up. Or no. do you just keep on going because he's going to run that football? Yep. Okay. Uh, Philop Rivers. That was... You know, he... he Bad performance. Really bad performance. Yeah, and he's got Pittsburgh this week, which the defense is just they, – they've rallied around the defense. Um, I I would not want to play Phillip Rivers. In Tennessee and then Chicago. Oh, goodness. Can oh. we see some Tyrod Taylor? No. no. no I'm kidding. No. no I'm kidding. But if they keep losing, this team's window will be closed. All right, running back stinkers on the week. Chiefs running backs, all of them. McCoy got Chiefs players. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Da I mean, Damian Williams, nine for twenty-three, three for fifteen. <clears throat> Mahomes was somewhat inaccurate after the ankle stuff. Uh, missed on plays down the field. You felt the absence of Sammy Watkins. They also never had the ball in the second half. Like if you look at the time of possession, I can't remember oh, the exact gross. numbers. It was like twenty minutes to three minutes. Yeah. It was disgusting. So I'm I'm not concerned. About Damien Williams and Shady. Yeah, it, I mean, if... I'm worried about Shady. If you Cause could... Because he got zero rushes in this game total, and Damien Williams, off an injury, had 100% of the rushing carries him and Darrell Williams, so I would be worried about Shady. Okay, that's, that's fair. That, that's fair. Uh, th this is a team that I think... I, I doubt you can, but if you can, off the heels of this left to right, top to bottom, poor performance... By... I would go buy all the Chiefs. I can if you can get Tyreek, Houston, if you Denver, can get Green Pat, Bay, Pat Mahomes, uh, it, it, you know any of those pieces. I mean, I'm not going to trade for McCall Hardman because I think he takes a back seat when Tyreek comes back. But yeah, I would. I'm not scared of the Chiefs. I think that's the point you're making. They, yeah, they were they were just out of rhythm in this game, and and the Colts, to their credit, you guys, you're you're not you're not understanding what a Kerplunk does. To uh, ankle? To fantasy. To fantasy points yes. in general. Well, he all the Chiefs kerplunked my team. Exactly. Yeah. This is my point. Thank you, Mike, once again. Very scientific. Mike Evans. What? 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 <laughs> Mike Evans. <laughs> Good grief, Mike man. Mike Evans is, is a weird player this year. Mike Evans is leading the NFL in air yards. He's leading the NFL in air yards. That's... Though, that was the metric that just showed us Will Fuller was about to break out. Now Godwin's in the top five too. Godwin seven for one twenty five and two on twelve targets. I love. We had this excuse: Mike Evans had a stomach virus weeks one and two, and then he's been a machine. And then how do you goose though? It's it's really it's take me through the upsetting steps. Upsetting and difficult. Well, you don't get the targets, and then you don't catch the targets. Oh, that's how okay. you goose. No, that's, but now I understand. Mike <laughs> Evans is someone that. You 100% have to start every single week. Yeah. You're terrified of, but I think you're going to be happier more often than you're not. I loved Matt Harmon's tweet, though. Yeah. Uh, he, letting us know that Chris Godwin and Mike Evans combined for seven for 125 and two this week, which is true. That is now, that's vicious. Yeah. I mean, he had to deal with Lattimore in this game. They chose to go away from him. And. I didn't think that I, we joked the window closed to buy Mike Evans low. I think it opened again. It cracked open. It cracked open. So would you buy him? Yes. Yeah, I, I would. would too. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Yes. As okay. long as the goose doesn't come with it. <laughs> I don't want a little buy, buy Evans, get a goose. I don't need that. Keenan Allen, four for 18. We kind of knew this. The The matchup was bad for him. Yeah. With Chris the Harris. History, yeah. The, the history against uh, that corner. So I. It's just a blip. See, I, th I think they lost this. I think they lost the game not going to Keenan Allen. I think that's how they lost this game. I would buy Keenan Allen. Yes. Julio Jones. Three. I, will, I will buy Julio Jones as T. well. T.Y. Hilton, 4 for 37. Buy. That is a buy because this he's game on script. Buy. He's on buy. So don't play him in the buy. No. But he'll be healthier. And the game script, look, they're, they're not going to do this to every team. We saw this to start the year. They didn't have to throw the ball. Jacoby Brissett was a bust. A big bust. He looked like he was going to have a great game, and then then he didn't see well, Tyran <laughs> Matthew. Well, I think the issue with uh, yeah. I think the issue with Jacoby Brissett and having a bad game is that the Chiefs had a bad game. The, yeah, Marlon The fact Mack. that Pat Mahomes didn't get the ball, couldn't score a bunch. I mean, the whole game script idea for playing Brissett, which has worked against the Chiefs three out of the first four weeks, is the fact that the Chiefs score a ton of points. Well, they game planned that away. You know, that's the first game in Patrick Mahomes' entire career that they didn't score twenty six or more points. Yeah, ever. I mean that that's insane. Yeah. 
Just a stinker. And they were right there at the end. He Mahomes almost saved his whole day on that last drive. If they had gotten the ball into the end zone there, he still puts up 30 points, managed to go over 300. He's not human. That play he made to Byron Pringle getting out oh of the pocket. Oh, my gosh. All right, uh, Emmanuel Sanders stunk it up. I was yeah. wrong on this one. Uh, Sanders, one for nine. The game script in this was complete flip from what we expected. They got up to a huge lead. Philip Lindsay, which we should have mentioned earlier, had a monstrous game. Um, Sutton had a huge play, and then the offense didn't do anything else. I mean, Sutton and Sanders combined for four catches in this game. Uh, Sutton had a monstrous uh, breakaway after he cut across the field, broke a tackle, went in on a 70-yard touchdown, and then Joe Flacco disappeared. He didn't throw the ball again. It was all Philip Lindsay, Royce Freeman, and they won the game. So Sanders stunk it up. Diggs stunk it up. Boy, man, what do you is, what do you do with Stephon Diggs? I would throw this game out of your consideration. Now, if you want to, okay, well, which games are you considering then? All of the rest. The but this game you throw out a little bit because he, this was a tumultuous week. We didn't even know if he was going to play. You look at the interview. Stephon Diggs did not know if he was playing until five minutes before the game. It was kind of like. I'm just going to go as is, and it was in doubt. He had seven catches the week before. I'm not saying you go sign him. I'm saying I'm just not considering this game in my analysis. I like seeing the team throw the ball more. So I would if he's active, he's going to be involved in the offense. If it's possible, and it very well not, might not be possible, but I would try to package trade him. I would try to take two players and trade up for someone else with the name of Diggs. I don't want him. But you can't drop him because of the name. But we've talked about in the past, there are landmine players. Players that, like, they're going to convince you because of the name or because of some situation to start them, and you're going to end up hurting yourself because of this. Now, that's me, not to say Diggs you. doesn't have good games in the future. They play Philly this week. That looks great. Diggs or Emmanuel Sanders rest of the season? Sanders. Sanders. Jarvis Landry or Stephon Diggs rest of the season? That one's tough. I yeah. would probably go Diggs. Jarvis, maybe. So we're, we're kind of entering wide receiver three territory, so he should be rostered, but you're not excited about anything he's done, and I, I don't blame anybody for that. It's – they won. I think he might be happy when they win and sad when they lose. But I, I think that's how it works. Maybe. Uh, nothing from Shepard or Golden Tate against Minnesota. Nothing from Demarcus Robinson and the Chiefs. We talked about it. Curtis Samuel, another stinker. Nelson Aguilar basically disappearing with the return of Alshon Jeffrey. Yep. Uh, tight end stinkers, Greg Olson. Hello. A lot of goosing going on. Darren Waller had a stinker. Well, OJ not, Howard. And Darren Waller is on a bye week uh, with the rest of the Raiders. I personally, if you can somehow buy Darren Waller on the cheap because of this, because of the bad performance plus the bye week, I would be willing to do that. He's been such a target machine. The... It was a weird game. It was an overseas game for Darren Waller, and the the, the game script got out well, of know control. You know what happens? All the all the pass he has to throw all the passes left handed or something like that, right? Doesn't it spin <laughs> the wrong way over there? Yes. Like, oh no, yeah, wait, like, same hemisphere. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, OJ Howard, I'm letting him go. I'm done. Yeah. This is the, this was the. I won't call man. it a swan song. It was almost a goose song. Yeah, was, oh man. Oh, the, uh, this goose. One for ten on two targets. The one for ten was to remind you he exists, but I don't think he should exist on your team anymore. And that stinks because I, I just believe talent would win out here. But when OJ Howard catches one pass and Mike Evans catches zero in a game, I mean that's shocking. Yeah, OJ Howard. I, I said it last week. I think he's the biggest bust of the season. That's not due to just an injury or an injury to another player on his team, like a quarterback or something. This is just he was a highly drafted guy. You thought one thing. He was you, the number one yeah. tight end taken after the top three. Like you know, when when you when the three were gone and you had the field, it was like OJ Howard was the highest ADP guy. They were taking the shot on the breakout, and he has his worst season imagine I mean he's been irrelevant every single week I'm worried about Delaney Walker two straight weeks with one catch on two targets well they found he a new tight end man AJ Brown <laughs> is a beast he of a man a, yes he is he gets a little bit this, bigger every week I like I don't remember him this big in college Maybe it was because he was next to DK Metcalf, play, you know, playing <laughs> alongside him. Probably was. But I genuinely like. I know he's a, a somewhat bigger guy, but when I watch AJ Brown out there, I'm like, this guy's he's a monster. Six foot two twenty six, according to Pro Football Reference. Hogwash. Yeah, that's pretty big though for a wide receiver. 
Uh, but Delaney Walker used to be a guy with no ceiling but the reliability. I'm just disappointed to see back-to-back. This is the inverse NBA Jam rules here. Yep. This is cooling down, cooling down, about to go on ice. You don't have a lot of options at tight end. You could see that based on the stinkers of the week. But he's got Denver next week. If you need him, I guess you can play him. You're going to have, yeah. you know, dumping O.J. Howard and Darren Waller on by and things like that. Disappointing game from Jimmy Graham. Only three targets. Caught all three of them for 41 yards on the week. Didn't destroy you, but at the same time, not what you hoped. Ebron stunk. Doyle stunk. Eifert, not not good. So the Cardinals, maybe they figured something out. DJ Swearinger is no longer a Cardinal. And uh, at a minimum, they get one week off of giving up incredible yardage and touchdowns to the tight end position. Wait, they get one? Oh, this week. I was like, wait, this past Austin week. Hooper's coming to town. They're not, they're not going away from that. Uh, no. Stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. You don't want to have stinky feet. No, and you need to spread a little extra on the tight end position this yes. past week. Uh, Tevin Coleman is expected to be available tonight. This is a oh, Mon- really? Monday night football. Available is not the same thing. He's expected to be available. Yeah, I'm, I, I would not play Tevin Coleman. No. I We said that earlier in the week. Even if he's available, that's a trap. Available a means, trap. That, <laughs> means that when Matt Breida limps off or Raheem Moser gets hurt or something happens, maybe Tevin Coleman ends up being active. But you just need to monitor that up to game time. Uh, the Browns game tonight, excited to see what happens. Maybe we have a new tight end in town, Jason. Maybe Ricky Seals-Jones. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's good to see you're feeling better, Jason. You you, you have a a seal bark in you, after all. Yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm coming back to life someday soon. All right, looking forward to tonight's game. We've got a waiver wire show tomorrow. Want to thank the studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, once again, delivering incredible deals on signed footballs and jerseys and helmets. A Tyler Boyd signed football yesterday, $42.12, and Tyler Boyd showed up. Cardinals gave up 22 passing yards in the first half of that game to Andy Dalton. Whoops. Probably Andy Dalton's fault, but still, turned it around in the second half. You can go to pristineauction.com, use the registration code BALLER, sign up, get some gear, get some swag, great gifts. All at pristineauction.com. Looking forward to the waiver show, guys. I need Kittle and OBJ. 26 points tonight to win in League of Record, guys. You rooting for me? No. Come on. No. Yeah, I'm not. See you tomorrow, everybody. (laughs) Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Support for today's show comes from Sonos. Every Sonos speaker is designed from the inside out for incredibly detailed sound and deep bass and fine-tuned by Oscar and Grammy award-winning producers, mixers, and artists. Was it easy to set up? It was super easy to set up. My new Sonos move. What's my favorite way to control it? I like my phone. You can go Bluetooth outside. If you're outside of Wi-Fi, you can go Wi-Fi in the house or around the house, and they just came out with, like I said, their new portable speaker. Enjoy brilliant sound anywhere with the Sonos Move, a durable battery-powered smart speaker for indoor and outdoor listening. Check it out at Sonos.com.